Eugene Levy and David Brindley are executive producers of The Reluctant Traveller with Eugene Levy. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby, and I wanted to start by asking you, Eugene, are you, have you become more or less reluctant to be a traveller as the series has gone on? Um, I, I don't think I'm. I, I don't think I'm definitely not more reluctant. Um, I think my, uh, I, I, I think I've kind of maintained a, a, a lovely level in terms of reluctance, um, uh, during the course of most of my life. Um, but I'm definitely enjoying the show. I'm, I'm enjoying the show and I'm enjoying what I'm getting out of it. Um, so you would think that might tilt less reluctant. Um, Jury's still out. What do you, what do you think, David? Has Eugene gotten more or less reluctant? <laughs> I think that's right, Eugene. I think sort of maybe tipping towards less reluctant, but that doesn't mean that uh, you've become a bona fide traveller at the moment. I would say. I think you you you've described it before as sort of getting halfway there, but never <laughs> never quite reaching the destination. I think. Uh, yeah, taking is, yeah, half, half, half the distance to a wall. You you know, every time you take half the distance to a wall, you get closer and closer. Or you're never going to get there. Listen, I don't know <laughs> if I'm ever going to get there. You know, I, I just I just know. I, honestly, you know, I you know I travel and I see a you know a twelve hundred year old cathedral. And I honestly, I'm wow for the first four or five seconds. And then what now? I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's another old church or, or maybe a museum. Um, that, that's kind of still there. But the, I'm loving think... the fact that I'm actually getting out and, and giving it a go. I think yeah. the amazing thing is that now we've been on what we've been on 15 trips i think uh, uh for the for this series uh and and to many many different countries and uh and you've enjoyed you know an awful lot of them but then if we ask you now is there a single country that you're really desperate to get to what would your answer be eugene i mean no i mean where <laughs> yeah well it's like where where now you've been out for two years where in the world do you really now want to go nowhere there's not one there's not one place that i'm uh, that i'm dying to get to there's not one place that i'm dying to see and i uh, with uh, that says a lot and that's as honest as i can be i mean you know um so i mean really thank goodness the show is is i mean it's actually getting me out and getting me doing things i never would have um would have done and i think that's a very positive thing mm. and, and like, uh, uh, David, what for you is important about the show uh, or like important about the show other than getting Eugene out of the house? I think we want to, you know, we basically want to transport the viewer off their couch to be in the places that Eugene is in. Eugene is an, am is an amazing travel companion. And uh, and I think we want people to feel like they uh, are, are really there and uh, or as close to be being there as they as they can do. So, um, you know, that's why the cinematography is so luscious that's why you know uh um we try to take eugene to lots of different locations that have got very distinct looks about them as well um uh and whether so ultimately what we're trying to do is whether you're an experienced traveler and and, and a globe trotter or whether you've never left the country that you're born in uh that vicariously you're enjoying the travel through eugene and that you might think by the end of it you know what i should give that a try I think that's what we'd really like people to feel is that maybe I should, maybe if 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 you've been someone like Eugene uh bef you know before in your life and not and not really been that open to travel I I hope that you might watch one of these episodes and think maybe maybe I should maybe I should just give it a go. You you Eugene like are a reluctant traveler as the as the title suggests like why do you agree to do this show? Well, I, 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 I agree. Well, once the, 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 the original premise of this show was a show about hotels, right? When they approached me and my thing was, why, why me? What have I done? I mean, why, 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 you know, I, I don't, I don't really, this is not my thing. Get somebody that's really good at this. 
And, you know, we had a back and forth. And for some reason, uh, you know, D David and the uh, the uh, Ac uh, Apple executive, uh, 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 Allison, uh, anyway, they were they were having some good laughs. And I and I and I and I thought I was making my point. And, uh, you know, so it was a good conversation. And it was uh, it was uh, Allison and David who who then got together. And I think I think it was David that was saying, no, no, that's the show. That's the show. That's the you know, the guy that doesn't want to travel. That's a much better angle than just the hotel. Anyway, they called me back and I they pitched that idea to me and I. I got it. I mean, I got why it could have a great deal of humor because. Um, because I don't love to travel, but but also because I I could actually do it and be honest. You know, the humor is coming from me. We're not trying to make necessarily a funny show. We're trying to make a good travel show that appeals to experienced travelers and people who don't travel that much. So as long as I could be honest on camera, I said, well, I'll give it a go. You know, I've never done this before. I've never been on camera as myself. That was a whole other thing I had to deal with. Um, you know, I'm a character actor as long as I'm in character and not really looking like me. Uh, I was quite comfortable, you know, but, you know, uh, put Eugene Levy in front of a camera and, you know, it's just me talking. That, that was a tough one for me. And I, and I thought millions of other people that might be watching. So <laughs> um, that's, uh, that was pretty much it. That's, that I, I agreed to do it because I, I understood. Yeah, I can see why this could be an interesting show. David, this is interesting. Do you see it more as like a comedy show or a travel show? Uh, I, I personally think it's a travel show with a very funny man rather than a, a setting out to make a funny travel show, if you like. It's, yeah. it's, it's not, a, not a comedic travel show because there is it, it really, you know, the joy of the show, I think, and probably even more so in season two um, uh, that's just passed, is that it, it, it has the ability to range in tone really quite significantly from the very, very funny and slightly absurd through to the very poignant and the very personal and um uh and so it it it's too reductive to say that it's a it's a a funny travel show i think it's a i think it's a travel show with uh, you know who is now one of the best companions uh, in the world to go traveling with uh, and he happens to be a very funny man so that's sort of how that's how we approach it i think yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I've always said if they want, if the intent was to make a really funny travel show, there's a thousand people that could do it, uh, you know, in a better way to make it funny, to have funny bits and funny, you know, make it genuinely comedic. And I think that, you know, sadly for me, uh, the humor in the show is coming, you know, from who I am. And I don't know, that's that's something I can discuss with a good psychiatrist, but I... I think um, I think that's the difference, you know. It, it w the intent is to make a, a a really good, interesting travel show, and um, and as long as I can be who I am, I guess that's um, that's where the chuckles come from. Yeah, like that. That's a good distinction to make, Eugene. And I wonder, like, even though you're not seeking out to make a comedy show or be funny. Your background in improv and comedy, does that help you with this show in terms of not maybe delivering jokes, but being a good listener and being in the moment and sort of responding to the situations around you in the show? Yeah, yes. It, it, I, I would say yes, in a way, but everything I was doing uh, in on the stage improvising um, was not done as me. Yeah. It was done in character and that that really made it kind of easy so um there was a there was a bit of a learning curve for me when i started this show which is can i can i engage with other people while you know on these travels and 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 make it interesting you know because i'm i'm you know i'm not generally a big chit chatter in life um and I think I, I thought that's the way you had to be when you're doing a show like this. 
Um, so I had to, um, I had to do, you know, I mean, I had to push myself a little bit and get some cobwebs off the brain and, and, um, and learn to relax as myself on, on camera. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I think it's, I, and I, I am much more relaxed. I mean, certainly second season, you know, after two seasons, I'm, I'm finding I, I actually can do this on camera and that's, um, that's a good thing. Mm. And, and what, like Eugene, what is the, like, what's the thing about comedy that you've been able to re-harness, um, for this, for this role and for this show? I think it's just being honest with people. Mm you know, in a way. And sometimes when I'm being honest with people, it comes out in a somewhat, you know, humorous, uh, humorous way, you know? Yeah. Uh, but it's really not, it's not actively trying mm. to be funny. Um, it's relaxing enough so that I can honestly be myself and let the, let the humor come out in a very natural, genuine way. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I'm, I'm like anybody else listening to the people I'm dealing with and learning something and wanting to find out about them and, you know, and what they do and what they're talking about. Um, you know, and chunk, chunks of time can go by without, uh, you know, without a, uh, necessarily without a laugh, but that's. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fine. I think it just keeps everything on a nice natural plane. Um, David, what's been like a favorite moment of yours from season two? I think I'd probably choose two. So, and they're very, very different uh, tonally. So um, <clears throat> I think the first one uh, would be in Spain when Hector Bellerin scores his goal and Eugene is watching in the Peña, the, the, the supporters club. And the day before Eugene has met Hector and he's given him a celebration <laughs> uh, to do that if he scores a goal. And the chances of Hector scoring a goal are minute. He's a defender. Defenders don't score goals that often in soccer. And, uh, and anyway, Eugene is watching and Hector scores the goal in the big grand derby uh, in, in, um, in Seville. Uh, and, and the place erupts, but the just sheer sort of joy and shock on Eugene's face when Hector pulls off his move in the middle of this 70,000 seater stadium uh, is one of the purest moments of sort of authentic joy in the whole, in, in anything we've ever filmed, I think. It was one of the most exciting moments in my life. I mean, I that, that was an incredible thing that, you know, the celebratory move that I gave him he actually does when he when he scores the goal in that game. That was that was crazy, crazy exciting. And that, and those kind of things, you know, when you're a documentary maker, a filmmaker, like you can't predict those things. Those things can't. You can't they, that's a lot of luck that's happening there to bring all those things together. And so to to be able to capture that moment was extraordinary. Uh, and then the other the other for me is right at the other end of the spectrum, and that was taking Eugene to to Glasgow to to walk in the footsteps of 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 his mother you know particularly in the tenement museum uh where he was able to see the sort of living conditions that your 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 mum would have lived in and then to take you to the synagogue as well where your mum would have actually walked um just felt like an incredibly special and and privileged thing to be able to do well the reluctant traveler has been nominated for two emmy awards so congratulations a non-fiction series award and writing for that episode that you mentioned david Eugene, going to Scotland, getting to see uh, Glasgow, places your, your mother, you say in the show that she would have um, been proud of you, you feel, being there. How do you think, like, more broadly, how do you think your mum would have felt about you going back and revisiting Glasgow? I think uh, she would have been, what's the word, tickled. I think she would have been tickled that I was in Glasgow and went to the spot where the Gorbals once stood, uh, the neighborhood where she was running around as a as as a kid. That that I was, you know, actually there. Um, 
seeing the kind of uh you know tenement situation that that she grew up in with her uh eight brothers and sisters um uh, and parents and a border i mean you know in these three tiny rooms um i'm not entirely i i don't i i can't honestly say what her reaction would have been to to no, if she was if she was here when I got back from that trip and I was able to say this is I saw exactly how you grew up as a as a as a kid and how did you do it? How did you sleep four people in a in a you know in 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 a in a bed and how there were it was so small how I we we never really heard about that, you know. I I, I'm not sure what her reaction would would have been. She, being in Glasgow and seeing the Gorbals, I think she would have been tickled. Uh, seeing the kind of situation that she actually grew up in, um, to be honest, I I I don't know whether that would have sparked more stories that we never heard before. Whether that would have triggered things we never heard before um it's hard to say but i'm glad i did it yeah. you know i i'm glad i got to go there because i i really never had the urge to go to scotland only, only because she she always said no i don't really care to go back yeah she probably she probably would be surprised that you made the trek um she probably would have been surprised you went to scotland you know Yes, we went to Scotland. We we saw it all. Now we're an awards website at Gold Derby. We love uh, we love the Entertainment Awards. We love the Emmy Awards, which you guys are nominated for this year. And this is the first time Eugene we've spoken since uh, you won the Emmy for Shit's Creek. Um, and you sort of when you won that Emmy, you sort of said in a little bit of jest, I think, um, that it's an ironic uh, it's uh, ironic that the straightest role you've ever uh, ever played lands you an emmy for a comedy performance and you might need to do some rethinking from the past 50 years <laughs> what what did you eugene seriously learn about comedy from that role on Shit's creek well it was um it was a uh it was a role again the one of the first character roles <clears throat> that I've played where I was closest to being me, where I kind of looked like me without the glasses. Uh, that was it. And um, so it was it was kind of working in that context that that was a, 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 a kind of a real challenge and and um, and that I, I kind of picked up on that and and uh, and it seemed to be working out incredibly well as the shows, you know, went on in that in that first season. Like this show, I mean, it was that was the big heart thumper. What? I'm not wearing a mustache. I'm not uh, I can't wear a hat. I can't wear, you know, uh, so. It was, um, and again, it was, you know, just bringing, you know, kind of uh, fatherhood, a, a my own take and and the character's take on what fatherhood is. And over and above that, you know, working with my own kids on the show was, um, was also something that just, uh, you know, kind of threw a, a lovely hue over the, uh, uh, over, over the entire production. Um, uh, and just, I think the, the biggest thing was, you know, just keep it honest, keep it honest, keep everything you're doing honest, keep your performance honest and keep everything that comes out of your mouth as honest as it can be. Um, and that was it. This was an important show in terms of, um, the audience having an, uh, um, an emotional uh, connection to the characters, right? That 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 was what we set out. We set out to make a character comedy and all the characters had to be, you know, genuine, believable and grounded 
And I just had to make sure that my character was doing its job along with everybody else's. I think like the thing, the, the uh, one of the little through lines between The Reluctant Traveler and what you did so well on Shit's Creek is just your reactions and how you listened and responded to things that were that were happening uh, that was sometimes absurd or different, unusual, or you're out of your out of your depth, out of your element, and that was like a, a lot of fun. Do you do you have for, for that? Can you just off the top of your mind remember a just quick reaction from Shit's Creek, like some absurd thing where it was like you reacted to something oh on the show yeah uh <laughs> well i oh boy i've got to think about this That's i you know I, reactive reactive com yeah which is a good point because i love reactive comedy and that's that's kind of what i lean toward when i was growing up you know what i watching television in the 50s jack benny was one of the big uh you know comedy icons back then and i loved watching benny because he wasn't the guy that came out with the jokes he was the guy that reacted to the jokes um <laughs> uh, so I, I just love that. And he got a bigger laugh than the person coming out with the joke. So I, I, I that, that kind of stayed with me. And, uh, um, uh, and I kind of carried that through reactions are, are kind of very important in terms of what I do, but um, trying to remember a specific reaction, that's fine. It would probably have to be, you know, anything working with, with Chris Elliott, because uh, uh, we, we loved kind of toying with each other on camera and uh, it was really hard, let alone to have a good reaction, hard to keep a straight face when I was working yeah. with Chris, but yeah. Nah, there's, sure. a, there's a really nice thing in, in reluctant, in reluctant traveler now as well, because Eugene can, you know, usually he's talking off camera to, to uh, uh, producer asking the questions, but there are moments and they're really joyful when he connects with the people at home and looks straight down the barrel with a with a reaction, you know, whether that's when an oyster comes out <laughs> and you know exactly what's about to happen. Yeah. Uh, but those moments of real connection now. And so we're play, playing with that grammar because, you know, I mean, uh, uh, but also that's really fascinating, Eugene, because you will have done that uh, hundreds of times in your Christopher, yours and Christopher's yeah. guest films um because that documentary grammar is the same isn't it so when you connect with an audience and you can look straight down the barrel um they're really electric lovely moments where you feel like you're just talking directly to one member of the uh, yeah of, yeah the, yeah no, those are amazing and again it's just it's about just uh, it's keeping everything honest mm. I, I wanted to quickly end with a bit of a bit of a bias question here. Season three, uh, I think you're going to look at the bucket list items for traveling for the reluctant traveler. Um, any plans to come to Australia? Um, I I don't know whether it's actually going to happen this year. Yeah, yeah, not not sure yet. We're still we're still locking down locations. But in fact, in fact, we had it. We had an invite from another Australian journalist last time we were doing some <laughs> interviews. So yes, there, there's a, there is there is quite the lobby to get us to Australia. It, it would know, be so. great to see the reluctant traveller down here. Uh, quite climb the Harbour Bridge, get on a ferry, like the ferry on Sydney Harbour, like, and there's lots of other uh, exciting, prickly things. Matt, you're writing the episode for us. Wait, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time today, both of you. Um, all the best of luck with the Emmy Awards. Let me just make sure I get the categories right. Uh, you were nominated for Best Hosted Nonfiction Series or Special and for writing for the Scotland My Mother's Country in the uh, Program Writing category for that discipline. Um, all the best for that, Eugene. You know, you know a thing or two about for your consideration and award campaigns. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you're, you're in a movie. Yeah, listen, I I can't. I'm just uh, I I'm always shocked. <clears throat> I'm always shocked getting a nomination or when anybody you know when there's an honor that's coming my way. And I think it's the Canadian Emmy. 
about that, you know, so I was kind of surprised with that. But then again, I wasn't surprised because the, you know, the production on this show is just stellar. And that's, uh, you know, that's uh, David and 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 the entire team at, uh, at two four. It's an amazing looking show. So I, I wasn't surprised in that regard. Yeah. Um, I'm always surprised when I'm included. But, uh, you know, here we go onward and upward. There we go. All the best. People can go to goldderby.com to follow the Emmys and other awards races. And just thanks so much for your time. This has been such a lovely chat. It has been. Thank you, Matt.